guys, Mark here, welcome back. Listen, we're gonna sit down with the laptop, we're gonna pull this date up, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what happened to the pistons in my motor last week. Stay tuned. All right guys, so if you remember back there a week or so ago and uh, it hurt the motor in the boat and brought it back in, and kind of in a whirlwind of emotions and whatnot and I decided that I was gonna throw in the towel and for the year and <clears throat> fix it over the winter and that sort of thing. And that lasted about maybe 20 hours and then again, if you know me, that's that doesn't sit well with me. So it got up the next morning, I was like, no, no, I can't do it, I have to fix it. I have to fix it right away. So we uh, sent the block out to the machine shop, ordered all the pistons and that sort of thing. So. Anyways, I'm glad that I did that. I'm hoping that I can catch the, the rest of the year. The downfall to it is that the block is at the machine shop. They're super, super busy. There's going to be a couple of week turnaround. I can't control that, but at least I've given it everything that I can to, um, to turn it around. So in the meantime, I have, a, I have some downtime, obviously, because I've uh, just been cleaning everything up and getting it ready. And I keep relaying over in my head what went wrong and and I kind of made a conclusion quickly afterwards that it was a combination of, uh, of low water pressure and high EGTs and that sort of thing. But it's still, something didn't sit right with me. And I thought, I just don't understand why. Like I had compensated, I put more fuel in for the good air. Um, and I, there was a couple things that kind of weighed heavy on me. So again, uh, middle of the night, last night, I wake up, all these thoughts rushing through my head and... I go out and grab my laptop and I sit down and I spend a couple hours and I'm going through the data from the night that we hurt the motor. And we didn't even make any passes, but I warmed it up on the trailer and I popped it up on plane and took it out to try and put a little bit of heat in the motor before we made a couple passes and that's when it, it let go. But the nice thing was I had the data logger on and I, I logged all that. So, and, and I had blown through it when we came back after I'd kind of brought it up and I said, oh shit, yeah, we had no water pressure and EGTs were high, but I never really spent a whole lot of time to figure out exactly why. So last night I did, and I'm really glad that I did because in doing so, I found out that I have a corrupt ECU. And I'm going to show you here how I determined that um, based on the data that was that that, uh, that we were able to pull and it was given to me. So. I tend to preach the data a lot, and here's another example once again of how uh, this problem would have never been found, and I actually would have heard it a second time if I didn't have it. So let me bring it up on the screen, show you guys what I'm talking about, and um, and we'll go from there. Okay, guys. So this is basically a run log of the entire time that I was out in the boat the night that um, that we nipped it. We um, uh, from basically leaving the dock and just trying to pop it up on plane. Take it out, put a little bit of heat in before I go and make some, some hits. So what you'll see here is the red is your speed, boat speed. Pink is engine RPM. Green and blue are exhaust EGTs. So there's a bunch of other shit that we can bring up there, but I didn't bother. So in looking at the data there, when I pulled it the night that it happened, I just, I saw that the EGTs went high and I thought, oh shit, I didn't put enough fuel in it. And <clears throat> anyways, I, in assessing it, I, I, I something wasn't sitting right with me that wasn't the problem there was something more to it so i had to dive in a little bit deeper so started thinking about uh different points of diagnosis that i could use so in my wisdom there my infinite wisdom uh i thought why don't i take a look at the injector on time basically that can tells me if the computer had control of the injector and if it did what it did with it when when shit went bad i presume this point right here at the peak uh egt's is where it melted it started to melt the piston down so Anyways, I um, I'm go over here, and if I pull up the injector on time, that's what you'll see in yellow. Voila. Here's my problem, and I'm going to zoom it up here in a second and show you. This is injector on time, and it's relative. It should be relative to map sensor and RPM. As it kind of takes charge over here, you'll see as I start to get on the RPM a little bit, map sensor responds to it. Over here, it did not. When I accelerate here and get up to around 4,000 RPM, you'll see the injector is actually coming down, almost basically shutting right off, does this little 
whatever the shit is going on down here and then starts to take control again. And if I actually enlarge it, it makes it even more defined. Here I am on the gas, injector is bottoming out, EGT is escalating through the roof, and peaking, no fuel in the motor whatsoever. Except here it starts to take off and pick up again. I can even exaggerate it a little bit more, I think. Yeah, so I don't know what was going on there. So I went back and I pulled some run files out from um, when we had been out last week when we'd actually made some really good hits, boat was fast and whatnot. And I wanted to kind of take a, take a look at some things and you can actually see it did it here again a bit too, but one other thing I noticed, I went in and I took a look at the, uh, the voltage again. As you know, I'm kind of a bit of a freak for voltage. I brought that up and look at the voltage line. You can see here, it's like a jigsaw or like a, like a skill saw blade. It, 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 it's all over the place. There's no consistency to the voltage. So right there, I look at these two things and I can tell that there's something going on in the ECU, that the ECU is corrupt or it's, it's I, I'm not sure, but there's something going on there. So what I concluded from this was when, when we, when we tried the new map in the boat, the new fuel map that we'd written for it, or we had written, that I got from a friend, we at that time decided that um, Rob had a, an ECU, a spare ECU, and we thought, well, why don't we write the map to his ECU, keep my ECU, then we could do some back-to-back -back testing to make, you know, to see if the map really worked and whatnot. So we wrote this map to that ECU, and Rob said, you know, I, I'm sure it's fine, but it's I've had it here for years, and I don't know, so... But it's obviously not fine so whether there's a bad connection or something in it but it's corrupt and the corruption is what caused me to, to melt that motor down because it, it lost control of the injectors and it would do it when I ran back through the, the log the logs from all the runs that we had made with that ECU in the boat off the trailer I put the boat in the water to warm it up when I'd accelerate to pop it up on plane the first time it would gurgle and run a bit rough as it popped up and I kind of attributed to to the fact that it was maybe just loading up and I it was always in the back of my mind I thought when well, we get this shit all sorted out I'm gonna have to go back in and we can clean there's something in that map that we're gonna have to clean it up it's loading with fuel off of an idle but but I wasn't concerned about it necessarily because it made good passes but when I went back and assessed the data after every voltage interruption so every time the ignition was shut off turned back on it would do this the injector pulse width would be goofy for a few seconds or a few minutes until it kind of seemed to seem to clear itself out. Um, I actually caught it one time when I was accelerating the boat up onto plane. I saw the EGTs actually spike really high. But in my, my mind I thought, because it, it, it sure sounded like it was it was rich. Uh, there's What happens with these when they're super rich you get flame propaganda in the exhaust chest where the EGT probes are, and it'll light off in the chest. So an excessive rich condition can cause you an extremely high EGT momentarily. And so, yeah, again, you're, you're popping the boat up on plane. You're going out to make some hits. There's all this shit going through your head because you're trying to think of all the changes you made and you make sure I turn the trim computer on and all this kind of stuff. So you're catching that stuff in your peripheral and trying to make note of it, but there's a lot of shit going on. So I did see it. I didn't think too much of it and, and I kind of ignored it. I'm learning now that I can't ignore any of that stuff. The other thing is I programmed a bunch of different warning lights in the boat, like in my dash that would come on for certain different things. And I've seen them come on before and ignore them because now I've got so many of them there that I forget what half of the shit is and I just forget it. So I'm going to shut those all off and I'm going to have one for temperature, one for EGT and one for water pressure. That way, if I see any one of those three light off, I literally abort the pass. It's over. I'm not trying to wonder, oh, shit, what was that? Uh, yeah, maybe I should, you know. Anyways. Um, again, though, we go back to the data. If I didn't have a data log in this boat, we would have put it all back together. We would have put the ECU back in the boat. We'd go out, and we wouldn't even get the thing up on plane, and we'd be putting two more pistons in it. 
the, uh, these maps, these fuel maps, that's when they, there's no, when there's, you're, they're not excessively high EGTs when you're under heavy load and the props biting and that sort of stuff. It's kind of when you're, you pop them up on plane and you're cruising mid RPM, the, the um, EGTs go through the roof and they don't, they don't like to be there. You don't want to be there, but you know, I mean, you do have to take it out and put a little bit of heat in the motor. So anyways, long and short is we're going to rewrite this new file to my ECU, which is a known good one. I think there's a problem with this one. Pluck the boat in the water and you know barring the new motors healthy and the water pressure is good and all that kind of stuff then i think we're on track so again one other little setback it's been a year of these and i've never i've been racing for 30 years and i honestly don't think that i've dealt with so many blows in one season ever but it just kind of makes you want it more right so anyways read the data assess the data make decisions based on the data and not off seat of your pants or your head because the data doesn't lie. Like I've said before, it's a truth serum. So again, hope you found this in, this information uh, intuitive. Uh, it's not for everybody. I know that I'm not going to get a million followers based off this stuff, but if you're into this kind of shit, maybe you'll think it's cool and uh, you can kind of relate. Maybe you've been there. So anyways, smash the like button, uh, share a comment and uh, we'll try and keep putting this stuff out for you. So, Thanks, guys.